What's up guys, Rogue9 here and I'm back with some more Rainbow Six Siege. A while ago I had quite a few requests to explore the damage multipliers for different body parts and different armor types, and more recently a lot of you have been asking me specifically about the Rook armor plates. How much damage do they absorb? Are there any other advantages or disadvantages? Well, there's only one way to find out, it's time for some experiments. As regular viewers will know, I usually give a timestamp at the beginning of the video to take you straight to the conclusion. But since in this video I'll be presenting information throughout, check the comments section below for a pinned comment with various timestamps to the different parts of the video. And with that, let's start out by examining the different target zones on your enemy. In the middle we have the upper body. Now this part is filled with quite a few squishy things that make you work. So if someone starts poking holes in this area, you're going to have a bad day rather quickly. It's worth noting here that arms, even though they're not as vital, still count to the same hit zone, and that's simply a gameplay choice. The way the characters carry their arms in the game means that they're always in front of their body, so when the game released and the arms were part of a different hit zone, how much damage you did to your enemy could feel quite random, depending on whether your shots would hit the body or the arms. So in an update a while back, the code was changed so that arms become part of the body hit zone, and that was a good change, I think. Apart from the upper body there are two more hit zones, the head, also filled with a rather important squishy bit, and last and also least, the legs. Mostly muscle and bone, but with a few veins and arteries that again you don't really want anyone poking holes through. And against light armor the damage multipliers are as follows. Getting hit in the head is almost always an instant death, no matter how weak the weapon, no matter how far away, no matter how much armor you're wearing. There's only a few weapons that don't get this headshot bonus, so that's Caveras Luizon, the shotguns in the game, explosive weapons, and I think Kor Ross also once tested collateral headshots with Glaz's sniper rifle, and again, a collateral strike to the head did not always kill outright, if I remember correctly. But those are the only exceptions I can think of. Any other type of headshot Shot, you're definitely going down. If you hit a lightly armored target in the chest, unsurprisingly, your weapon will do its advertised damage, at least at close range. For leg shots, the damage multiplier is 0.75 and then round it down to the nearest point of damage. For medium armor, the body multiplier is 0.9, and while the leg multiplier is also 0.75 rounded down, that is stacked on top of the 0.9 multiplier and results in 0.675. For heavy armor, the body shot multiplier is 0.8 and the leg multiplier is 0.65 rounded down, but once you stack that with the body multiplier again, it ends up being 0.52. So if you hit a heavily armored opponent in the legs at point blank range, you're already doing only about half the damage your gun is supposed to. But now what happens when you attach Rook armor to any of the three operator types? When I tested the damage reduction on different types of armor and different strike zones, I ended up with a fairly consistent damage reduction of between 0.78 and 0.84, with most of those results falling around 0.8 to maybe 0.82, and those minor variations will be down to the rounding that has to be applied, simply because the game only deals in full damage points, not fractions. So the conclusion there is that the Rook armor plates add a damage multiplier of about 0.8, which is then applied over the top of all of the other multipliers we've already discussed. And when we then calculate the new damage multipliers for each armor type and each strike zone, we end up with these results. The damage multipliers for body shots are 0.8, 0.72 and 0.64. If you hit the legs, those go down to 0.6, 0.54 and 0.416. So essentially picking up an armor plate as a lightly armored operator turns you into a heavy. And if you're already wearing medium or heavy armor and you add a ballistic plate on top of that, well, let the carnage begin, right? Except not quite. I calculated the extra shots to kill you would need against light, medium and heavy armor point-blank body shots for 56 weapons in the game based on their baseline damage stat, and the average increase in shots to kill was only 0.71. In 51 cases you needed no extra shots to kill, in 116 cases you needed one extra shot and in only one case did you need two extra shots and that's the P90 against a heavily armored opponent who is then wearing Rook armor. 
Of course, once more multipliers come into play, such as shooting at distance, shooting through cover, hitting the legs or having a suppressor attached, then the number of additional shots to kill you need when comparing a rook armoured target versus an unarmoured target increases exponentially. But in a straight up close range gunfight, the difference isn't all that massive. But the good news is there is a significant benefit to wearing rook armour beyond the damage reduction. If you're wearing rook armour, you will always go down but not out as long as you're not hit in the head. No matter how little health you have left, no matter what weapon you're hit with, once per round, rook's armour will save you from instant death. If you want to know more about the down but not out mechanic, I've already done a video on that and interestingly, I had several comments on that video telling me that I'd made a mistake. People claimed that as long as you kept picking up extra rook armor, you could go down but not out several times in one round. So I went ahead and tested it and as Ross would say, this one's busted. Even in a custom game with double health, if you get hit the second time, even if you picked up an additional rook armor plate, you're definitely dying instantly. And that wraps up my segment about the different armor types and the strike zones and the multipliers. And next up, I want to look at sort of unusual types of damage. And this was inspired by an interesting question from Aleut Rainbow asking me if the fall damage was the same for each of the different operator types. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, if you're wearing heavier armor, Armor and you jump out of a window, you are liable to injure yourself more than if you're not wearing heavy armor. So I jumped off of a whole bunch of stuff with a whole bunch of different operators a whole bunch of times, and the results showed that there is no difference in the fall damage for different operator types. The only factor that affects fall damage is how far you fall. And as I was testing this, I thought there's all sorts of other unusual types of damage that might also be interesting to test. Does the type of armor you're wearing affect what damage you take from Twitch's shock drone or maybe smoke's gas canisters? Or what about Capitao's sort of fire arrow thingies, whatever they're supposed to be? And then of course there's also Bandit's batteries. And the results were no. The type of armor you're wearing makes no difference in terms of the damage you take from these gadgets. And I guess that kind of makes sense. I mean, the type of armor you wear doesn't really protect you against poisonous gas now, does it? Joseph Aguilar had a question along similar lines and he was specifically asking about the bleed out time. Do the different types of operators bleed out at different speeds? And as you can see from the comparison I did, no, they bleed out at exactly the same pace. And incidentally, crawling along the floor while you're bleeding out doesn't actually change the bleed out time. It just means that you won't be able to stop and put pressure on the wound, which doubles the standard bleed out time. And I think that pretty much covers all of the aspects I can think of in terms of the damage reduction of the different armor types. But of course, the different levels of armor each also have their own movement speed. So let's take a closer look at that. The first thing I wanted to test is if there was any disadvantage in terms of speed when you apply an armor plate to your character. I mean, it would make sense, right? Uh, attaching more armor to your character means carrying more weight, which should mean reduced movement speed. Time for a little race. Contestant number one is Carvera, not wearing rook armor, and her opponent is Carvera's ghost from another time, this time wearing rook armor. And as you can see, there is no difference in the speed between the two. And I also confirmed this for medium and heavy armor. Observe an example of Echo running on screen now. So there's no disadvantage to putting on rook armor. That's good to know. And last but not least, let's do a speed comparison between the three different armor types. And the results were consistent. Medium armor is about 90% as fast as light armor, while heavy armor is about 75% of the baseline speed. Carrying a shield as Blitz, Montagna, Fuse or a Recruit makes you even slower, taking you down to about 67.5 times the baseline speed. And when good old Blackbeard attaches his ballistic shield to one of his rifles, he is the slowest of all, clocking in at about 62.5% the baseline speed. But that's only with his shield attached. If you don't attach the shield, he's still a medium armor operator and goes about 90% of the speed. And switching to your pistol, even with the shield attached, still allows you to to go the full speed of medium armor operators. When you're using the other shield operators on the other hand, switching to the pistol will not give you a speed advantage and that kind of makes sense since you're still wearing the shield on your back. So the only heavy armor operator on the attacking side who can go regular heavy armor operator speed is fuse as long as you bring one of the rifles instead of the shield. And that's pretty much everything I could come up with in relation to the different types of armor and rook. 
I hope all this info has been useful. If I've missed out anything important, feel free to put that in a comment below and I'll do my best to incorporate that info into a future video. Thank you so much everyone for watching the video and I'd like to say a special thanks to all of you who have subscribed recently and of course all of you who have been subscribed for a while now. If you enjoy my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, now's as good a time as any and if you are already subscribed, please do consider to activate notifications by clicking on the bell icon. Ever since the recent media scandals around YouTube, I've seen an odd phenomenon in that my old videos are actually getting more views than my new ones and that's despite having far more subscribers now. I'm not quite sure what's going on there but the bottom line is if you've subscribed because you want to see my future videos then the only way to make sure you get to see them is by hitting that bell icon. And with that guys thanks again for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.